Hey, I'm Mike. Welcome to Need to Make It. In a previous set of videos, we tested the Ender 3 version 3 model KE, and for the most part, it was a pretty good printer. That is, if you print in the middle of the bed. Because when we printed towards the front of the bed, we had parts that looked like this. So in this video, we're going to design, we're going to install, and we're going to test our very own printer upgrade to see if we can get better results. So, stick around. Now before we get into it, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell as well so you always know when a new video is released. And so the algorithm shows favoritism to this channel and prevents me from becoming an utter failure. From the last two videos, which I will link up there above, we know that the linear bearings don't fit the rods properly. And it's off by just a tiny amount. It's even actually hard to see and hear. However, because of the setup with the bearing blocks mounted only in the center, any movement away from that center is made larger due to the teeter-totter effect. And most people probably don't even know they have this problem because they only print towards the center of the bed. But with time and some wear, it's going to get worse and I think we're going to need to have a better long-term solution. To start off, I want to 3D scan the base of the printer and to do that with any level of accuracy, I'm going to be using hairspray and then I'm going to gently dust it with baking soda. This works really well, but for some reason I had a lot of strange looks in the store when I bought this hairspray. I've removed everything that I can from the base as well just to try and get the best results possible. Powdering the object changes the surface color, the texture and the sheen and that's going to give the software an advantage and I'm using the photogrammetry part of Polycam with an iPhone and the iPhone has a LiDAR scanner and that will also be able to scale the model to within about 1% accuracy. We can then bring that 3D model into Fusion 360 and then we can add these MGN 12C by 350 millimeter long rails and the carriage is in as well because we are converting this printer to linear rails. But we're not just adding them the way you've probably seen before. If we can run the rails beyond this bump out just a little bit, we can then space the carriages out both sideways, which is good, but the more important feature is that we can also move them away from each other in the Y direction. And by doing this, we get away from that teeter-tottering effect. And now rather than pivoting just at the center, we have these two carriages that are resisting the lifting and falling of the opposing sides. And when doing this, it's going to be important to make sure that we have a little bit of room for adjustment for later on. To be able to attach the punched steel support plate to the linear rail carriages, I've created these printed adapter plates to expand the width just enough. Also, I've gone to the smaller carriages because these are less massive and also having four total spread apart is better than having two just in the center. I noticed that the steel frame below the aluminum bed is dome shaped and I believe it's because it was stamped. So to get as much contact surface as possible and to make sure the pieces mate together properly and that the four mounting points for the aluminum bed can stay close to parallel with the frame, I have also domed those adapter plates as well. And if you want to do this upgrade yourself and yours is not domed, please let me know. But for now, I'm going to have to assume that they're all alike. It's time to print some parts and I'm using PETG here just to test it out. I think PETG is fine, but long-term ABS, ASA or polycarbonate are probably better options for stiffness at least. My first set looks really good. They're from Orange Prusman PETG. Unfortunately, there is a problem. I must have mixed up which side was the top and I have these bosses in the wrong place. So I'm gonna be doing this again, but this time I'm gonna be doing it from Galaxy Black Pet G. And now they fit like they should with just a little bit of clearance and room for adjustment. I need to add some heat set inserts so that we can connect the steel plate to it. Unfortunately, I'm still waiting for the right size to arrive. So I'm going to be using the longer ones for now. It's time to go ahead and get everything mounted. So first off, we're gonna remove these M3 screws here holding on the Y-axis motor. These are just screwed through the base. And unfortunately, we cannot reuse these screws. We're gonna to have to use 12 millimeter long screws because of the extra thickness they're gonna be adding here. So here is our new piece. This is the bottom section. It was printed like that. And this one is printed from PETG carbon fiber. It turned out okay. I had a little bit of a cooling issue in here. And I figured out that if I pointed this more towards the auxiliary fan rather than in this direction, that I can avoid a lot of this. What I've done is designed these parts to be printed vertically. And this is going to allow us to print everything at the same time, but it also allows us to print the least amount of parts possible for this job. They also are going to be able to hug the base really nicely to all the little contours. I really wanted to avoid printing these flat because then we would need supports and we'd end up with a rough surface. 
So these are M3 by 12 millimeters and we can just pull up on the pulley and we're gonna snug all four of these down, not too tight for now. Okay, the back is a little bit of a different story. So I've printed the back piece from Pet G. It fits over really nicely, it looks okay. Unfortunately, because the original screws went through into the power supply, as soon as I remove those four screws, the power supply has dropped down. So we need to unplug the machine, make sure there's no power going to this thing, take the bottom panel off, and then we need to push the power supply back up so that we can put these screws back through. So the original screws for the back were M4 by 18 millimeters. And instead of these, we need to use these ones, which are M4 by 20 millimeters. We can't use anything longer than 20 millimeters because we're gonna be going into the power supply. And if they're too long, they're gonna go in through and damage that power supply. Okay, so we already have the carriages for the linear rails mounted to these plate adapters. And these are just snug down, so they're not tight and they're not loose. I have pre-oiled these. Okay, so we can assemble those adapter plates to the steel plate and just again, snug those down. These are the original screws. Now, before I forget, I need to remount this belt support bracket. And while we're at it, this activates the switch at the back for positioning for the Y axis. Whoops. Oh. Yeah. Whoops. Oh. Okay, so we have M3 by eight millimeters and we can put a couple screws into the front, loose. And we're gonna add a couple screws into the back loose. Just gonna make sure everything is lining up properly. Looks good. And we can tighten down. front. We can tighten down the back. Just make sure it seems okay. Seems all right. Okay, then we can add the rest of the screws. So at the front on each side, we have three screws. On the back, on the left-hand side, looking from the front, we have four screws and on the right hand side, I was only able to get in two screws because there was a bit of an interference there with the mounting holes for the power supply. Okay, so let's get our belt mounted back on. Okay, so you can see we still have a little bit of movement. So what we can do now, we tighten down these two sides. So now that these are tight, we can take this steel plate off because we have to get access to the last screw that connects the carriages to that adapter plate. Okay, now we can tighten these down, but before I do, I'm just gonna make sure that this is parallel to the frame. Doesn't need to be exact, just fairly close. Self-test. Automatic Z offset, auto leveling. Because I've rooted this printer already, I have access to mainsail and I have a really nice mesh that I can reference. And it looks like this side is low by about half a millimeter or so. 
So I have these spacers that I've 3D printed and I'll just raise this one side up. And if you need to print some of your own, I will include a one millimeter shim so that you can simply adjust the Z height in the slicer to get the size that you need. And now we can re-soak and recalibrate and then we are good to go. It's a good idea to run a test print in order to make sure that the linear rails and bearings are broken in properly. And then you can wipe them clean and then re-oil them again. And if you bought the cheap ones, they might feel a little bit stiff at first, but after a few prints, they should move much easier. Let's run some tests to see if the problem we were having has gone away. This print is from Sparkle Red Bamboo PLA and I printed this one towards the middle and it looks pretty good. But next up, I printed these two corner brackets and these were prints that I was always having trouble with before. The middle one would print okay, but the one towards the front would have this kind of undulating surface. And now we can see that the one at the front looks the same as the one towards the middle. I think this was a great upgrade. I'm happy with how stiff the setup is and it should remain that way for a very long time. I just need to make sure that I keep it clean and re-oil it every so often. I will leave the links down below for anything that you need if you want to do this upgrade yourself. And it is better for the channel if you can download from Maker World, but if you don't want to, I will have a printables link down there below. I would recommend getting the black rails if you can find them at a good price. And the kit that I purchased has the four carriages in it. So if you watch to this point, we're getting to the part that had me pulling my hair out. I actually used to look like this before the video. All of these changes gave us a very stable bed and we still don't have perfect results. So I'm making one last attempt at finding the solution. I know we have a stable X, we have a stable Y, and for the Z travel, we do have the posts that do vibrate a little bit, but they're actually pretty stiff. So I don't think that is the source. So I am leaning more towards the extruder again. This design does not sit right with me. I don't see the style of extruder on fast printers. And I'm also seeing better results on PLA filament compared to PETG. And the way the extruder grips each type of filament may be a little bit different. So let's tighten the spring and apply more force to the filament and do another test. So here's the original one printed from PETG. This is always the material that I've been having the most trouble with on this printer. And here's the one printed from PETG, the exact same material after tightening the extruder screw. And it does look a little bit better. So I think we need a different solution for the extruder on this printer to achieve excellent results. I like the bed slinger because they're easy to work on, but I don't like the bed slinger because we're trying to run a printer at high speed that was not purpose built for it. And I can't really see how it's possible to take something with this amount of mass and move it at high speed and expect to get great results. I'm a little bit conflicted on this. Should we keep trying to make bed slingers go fast or should we focus on purpose-built high-speed printers with Core XY or maybe PO Poly's linear motor setup? This KE printer has fairly pronounced ringing on the Y axis and if the printer doesn't actively compensate with a G sensor, will the quality of this print and ringing be more pronounced as we continue to print and add more mass to the build plate? Before we end this video, I want to leave you with something and I'm not sure about whether this is a good idea or not. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. But now that we've stiffened this up, so we don't have the this rocking like it was rocking before, it's quite a bit more stable. That steel plate doesn't seem like it's necessary. So what if we were to replace that steel plate with something that's much lighter and it's also 3D printable and you could probably do it yourself. Would that work? Well, myself and our team on Discord have come up with this cool design and it even has some built-in standoffs. These are 
the mount locations for the carriages and it's got just about everything in it and this is from polycarbonate it's pretty stiff no it's not as stiff as the steel but it's not too bad i have a feeling that this may just work i'm going to put it on here but i'm not going to do any more testing for this video i just want to get your thoughts on whether this is a good idea whether we should move forward with this or not Thank you again to each of my patrons for helping to support this channel. And if you want to help support this channel as well, you can click the link in the description there below. I hope you enjoyed the video and found that helpful. Take care, everybody. We will see you on the next one.